it is possible. Um, bless the Lord today, beloved. I just want to begin with a series about Jesus from the Gospels. I want to preach about and study many of the miracles of Jesus and the supernatural encounters that people had with Christ found in the Gospels. I want you to get a good, full picture of Christ so that your faith may be strengthened. I want the church to grow in faith so that we can continue to be used by God in a supernatural way and understand that there's nothing too hard for God to work out, nothing too hard for God to fix, nothing too hard for God to repair, turn around, make over, and recover. I want you to have a strong faith, a faith that knows that God can move mountains out of your way, provide when you don't have anything, fix something that seems like it was irreparable. I want your faith to be strong. I want you to know that God can save your daughter, that God can save your son, that God can save your cousin Junebug, that God can save your wife, that God can save your husband, they ain't never seen church. I want you to have a faith that believes that God can heal your body, that God can heal your heart, that God can heal your mind. I want you to have a faith that knows God can still the raging waters in your life, that God can calm the troubling waves in your life, a faith that knows that God is more than able to meet your needs way beyond whatever you could even ask or imagine. I want you to know without a doubt that God can fight every one of your battles, that God can turn it around for you when you thought it wasn't going to get any better. God can make it right. I want you to have a faith that will trust God in the midst of trouble, knowing that he'll take care of you. I want you to have a faith that says he can recover that which was lost, that he can restore that which was broken, and he can revive that we thought long since had been dead. I want you to know he can turn your marriage around. He can give you your heart's desire. He can open that door of employment. He can figure out how you're going to make it to the end. I want you to see Christ as nothing less than the ultimate source of power in the universe. I want you to have a faith so strong that, that, you, can, that you can feel like there's nothing that you can't get through and nothing that you can't overcome. And today, I just want to look at, you want you to look at your situation and know that it is possible. It is possible. God can do it. God can solve your problems. It is possible. What you were thinking was impossible. I need you to start right now in this moment thinking it is possible. There is nothing too hard for God. Even if it's been impossible for you up to this moment, it is way possible for God. For many of us, there are some areas in our lives that we have labeled impossible when the Lord wants us to label more than possible. Possible meaning able to be done with, within the power or capacity of someone or something possible. It means it's achievable, it's conceivable, it's feasible, it's imaginable, it's potential, it's probable, it's viable, it's a breeze, it's a cinch, it's a snap, it's dual, it's easy as pie, it's no swept, it's a piece of cake, it's simple as ABC because it is possible because the moment you interject God into the equation, what could now could, what wasn't now is, what did now can do what was a problem now has a solution what was troubling you now can be overcome what was too much to handle now can be easily handled because with God there is nothing impossible with man some things are impossible but with God all things are impossible all things are possible excuse me Abraham and Sarah will tell you there's no time frame that is out of bounds for God God can add time to your clock. Just look at their son Isaac that they had in the old age. Uh, Moses, what would you say? There's no natural thing that is impossible for God to work in your favor. Just look at the Red Sea situation. Joshua, what would you say? There's no man-made situation that is impossible for God. Just look at the walls of Jericho and how they came tumbling down. There's no physical limitation that's too big for God. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, there's no condition that has gone too far. Ask that dead man walking Lazarus. Uh, there's no supernatural thing that is bigger than God. Ask those legions of demons uh, that had to jump into those pigs uh, and make pork chops on the side of the beach. Uh, all you need to know is that it is possible. 
Today I want to show you for just a minute a story that we've heard many times before. This story takes place on a late afternoon. The disciples have come back to report to Jesus how things have been going. If you read the earlier part of Mark 6, and I always tell you, you got to put things in context. Uh, the earlier part of Mark 6, uh, Jesus has sent the disciples out to go preach and teach and lay hands on the sick and cast out demons. He sent them out to share the good news of Jesus Christ and, and tell folk the kingdom of God is at hand and causing them to turn from their wicked ways and follow the Lord. So they had been on a, a, a long journey and they come back and they're telling the Lord how they had done and spread the news, but they're tired and hungry. They've been traveling and they, they need to rest and get something to eat. Uh, and when they get back where Jesus was, the crowds were coming to and fro so much that it was impossible for any of them to get any quiet time and time to rest. And, and so Jesus tells the disciples that they should get in the boat and travel to a solitary place. Uh, now that, that it reminds, it doesn't, it reminds me, it doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how much you're doing for the Lord. You are going to get tired. You're going to need some rest. You're going to have to take a break every now and then. So Jesus and his disciples leave the area, but as they leave, uh, the crowd sees where they're going and begins to run on the land and follows them and gets to where they are. So when they dock, the crowds are waiting there. See, they can't get enough of that life-changing, life-giving word that Jesus had been preaching. The folks were hungry for that word. They had said in earlier part of Mark, no one has taught like this. Uh, no one had that kind of understanding. No one had that kind of authority. They were hooked on this word. They were hooked on this life-giving message. They could not stop feasting on the bread of life. They were so hungry that Jesus refers to them as sheep without a shepherd. Uh, you you see, sheep can't find a pasture without someone to lead them to green pastures. And sheep need a shepherd. And Jesus refers to them as hungry sheep in need of someone to lead them to the green pastures. And, and beloved, aren't we all just sheep? Are we all just hungry? Are we all just hungry for the living bread, the bread that, that can satisfy your hunger? The problem is uh, that many of us try to satisfy our hunger with things that only leave us hungrier. Uh, and so, friends, I beseech you, I beg you, I plead with you to get your hunger satisfied from the bread giver, the bread that comes down from heaven, the bread of life, the manna that falls from the sky, Jesus the Christ. I can honestly say myself. Uh, that I have feasted on this bread uh, and he will satisfy your deep hunger. He is that supernatural Snickers bar that can turn you into, from something ugly into something beautiful. You've seen that commercial somebody sitting there all mean and grumpy and somebody gives them a Snickers bar and they turn into someone nice and beautiful. Oh Jesus is that Snicker bar but you don't have to pay for it. Uh, it don't cost anything. Uh, it won't make you fat. It won't extend your waistline. Uh, it won't raise your sugar up, uh, but it will raise your spirit up. Uh, it will satisfy your soul. Uh, it's like a cosmic Starbucks uh, with a double shot. It'll bring even the dead thing back to life. Uh, he is just what you need. 